All right, good evening again. Um, my name is Kelly Erse. I'm the Wellness Program Manager for the Exercises Medicine Program. And I am joined this evening by Chelsea Armstrong, one of our Wellness Program um, uh, Exercises Medicine Specialists, um, who's gonna be talking with you tonight about choosing the right shoes for your workout. So I'll turn things over to Chelsea. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me tonight. Um, give you a little bit of background about myself before starting. Um, I am an Ohio State grad. I graduated in 2014 with a degree in exercise science, and then I got credentialed as a certified exercise physiologist, and then went on to get my exercise medicine credential as well. Um, and I really uh, started running kind of post high school. I grew up playing soccer, stuff like that. Started running, um, starting to get a lot of like knee pain, joint pain. And I really started to kind of dive into more like footwear and stuff like that, switch it up. Um, and my knee pain completely got better along with some other things, which we'll get into uh, later on. But um, so I wanted to kind of do a topic on choosing the right shoe. I think a lot of people, um, at least I've had the question a lot about like, oh, where do I start? Does it really matter? That sort of thing. So I'm here to talk to you guys about that. So the overview here, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between walking shoes, running shoes, hiking shoes, a little bit about biomechanics of your foot, foot strike when you walk, um, how your foot hits the ground, um, what to look for when you are out buying shoes, um, some different places that you can go to get, um, get fitted properly for shoes, and then kind of talk a little bit about like insoles and orthotics. So starting out, does wearing the right shoe really matter? Um, so there are different shoes, kind of what I said a second ago for different activities, whether you're walking, running, hiking, that sort of thing. Um, and then looking through different research, there's actually no research that says switching shoes can decrease your risk of overuse injuries. However, there were research articles that wearing, um, different shoes can kind of shift your biomechanics. Um, so the way your foot hits the ground, uh, which we'll get more into different biomechanics later, but it can adjust that. And if you have the wrong biomechanics when you're walking, running, stuff like that, that can actually lead to overuse injuries. So in turn, yes, it, it can affect it. Um, and then as far as looking for the right shoe, you want your shoe to be comfortable. Um, if you're not comfortable, that's gonna cause blisters, different things like that, which can affect it as well. Um, and then where to start. So you first want to decide what your activity is going to be. If you're mainly a walker, you probably want to look more for like walking shoes. If you're mainly a runner, running shoes, hiking, hiking, um, kind of determine maybe what sort of surface you're going to be running on more or walking on more. And then um, determine what your foot biomechanics are and your foot strike is. Um, and then don't just buy a brand because you like a brand. Actually go and try on the shoes, find what works for you. And don't just get something because a friend is getting it. Each person's foot is different. So you want to find something that works for you and is customized to you. Um, so here's kind of a little chart that explains a little bit of the differences between walking, running, and hiking shoes. Walking shoes tend to be a little less cushioned in the heel, whereas running shoes tend to be a little bit more cushioned. Um, when you And then for hiking, hiking is similar to running shoes, but they have um, these lugs on the bottom, which are going to help for grip because typically when you're hiking, there might be rocks and roots and you're more, more likely to slip. So they added those lugs to have grip there. Walking shoe, your sole has a little bit more give where the running shoe has a little bit of a stiffer sole. And then hiking goes a little bit more than running with the stiffer sole. It's a little bit even more stiffer. And some hiking shoes actually have rock plates on the bottom to keep that shoe sturdy when you were going over rocks and roots. Um, and then walking shoes tend to be a little bit heavier. Again, that probably um, comes for it to, well, yeah, they're a little bit heavier. And then the running shoes tend to be a little, little bit lighter because you want something for speed, which is why the running shoes tend to be a little bit lighter than the walking shoe. Um, so biomechanics of feet. Um, so I made a put a little chart here or pictures. Um, so dorsiflexion is basically when you are bringing your foot up into like a flex position and plantar flexion is when you're pointing your foot down. Um, so that kind of goes when you're doing like a heel to toe contact, so you're kind of going in that dorsiflexion and plantar flexion motion. And then pronation and supination is the way that your foot angles, whether you turn more inward or outward. So right here in the middle, that's more of a normal stance. Um, we do tend to pronate a little bit, just when you're normal walking, you do want a little bit of pronation. 
But if you look over here on this left side, that is when you start to get that overpronation where you're putting a lot of weight on the inner part of your foot. And then vice versa, supination is when you are walking more on that outer type of your foot. People who have high arches tend to be more in this supinated position. So you're putting a lot of the pressure over here. And then people who have more flat arches um, are going to be pronated typically a little bit more and put more weight on this inner foot. Everything is all linked from your foot all the way down up to your hip. So if you're constantly putting all the pressure out here on the outer heel, um, if your shoe's worn down or if you don't have the right fitted shoe and you're putting a little bit more pressure over there, it can turn kind of go all the way up to causing knee issues, hip issues. Same thing with over here. If you're putting a lot of pressure on that inner foot all the time, it's going to kind of go all the way up to the hip area sometimes. Um, and then talking about foot strikes. So the way that your foot hits the ground when you are walking or running. Um, so the first type of strike is forefoot. It's where the ball of your foot is gonna hit the ground first. Um, that is very typical of people who might be doing sprints or running, stuff like that. Um, midfoot is where the outside edge of, or the middle part of your foot basically hits the ground first. And then rear foot, your heel strikes first. Um, typically for walkers, you do a heel to toe contact um, so that's kind of a little bit more common for walkers, midfoot to forefoot tend to be a little bit more common for runners. However, we all have a little bit of a natural foot strike and, um, kind of looking through some different research stuff. Um, we don't want to try to switch our foot strike too much. We want to try to do what we're used to. If you do switch, you would want to do it with guidance, make sure you're doing strength training to accommodate switching that. So sometimes certain athletes might try to switch their foot strike to improve their athletic performance. If you're just out walking, running, stuff like that, I would just try to stick with your natural foot strike for that, unless you're getting a lot of injuries and your doctor suggests otherwise. And then how do you know your foot biomechanics foot strike when you hit the ground? Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can find this out. Um, one, you can just look for wear on your shoes. Um, Typically, again, like where you're hitting the ground first, you're going to have a lot more wear on the bottom of your shoe. So if you've had shoes that you've worn for a while, just kind of flip them over and see where they tend to be worn out a little bit more. That's going to help to indicate the way you strike the ground. Another way you can do it is if you get your foot wet and then step onto a, either a piece of paper or a paper towel. These images here kind of show what you might see. And again, it can help dictate what your foot strike is. So if you see a lot of your feet, you probably have lower arches, you're going into more of that um, over pronation. If it looks like this in the middle, that's gonna be more of that neutral, the slight pronation, but the neutral foot. And then if you see this, it's gonna be more of that higher arch. Um, sometimes you might see a little bit out here, but you have a lot of like the middle part gone. Um, so that's gonna be that supination. Um, another thing you can do, which is what I have done, some of these, uh, and I, I'm sure there's more stores, but I know these are ones that I know for sure do a gait analysis and they actually will walk, watch the way that you walk or run. And then they watch the way your foot hits the ground and they can actually help tell you what your biomechanics are and how you're hitting the ground and can help guide you to what sort of shoe you should be getting. Um, and then if you are a runner, um, some of the PTs, uh, like the physical therapy offices actually do gait analysis um, where they actually will watch you run on a treadmill, they're videotape it, and they will help you control your biomechanics and give you suggested footwear. They might help with different strength training stuff. Those typically tend to be an additional cost. The gait analysis at um, Fleet Feet, Columbus Running Company, Second Soul, those ones typically are free. They'll just watch you, um, watch you walk. So different types of shoes. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys have seen some of these different things online and not sure exactly what they're referring to when they talk about neutral shoe, stability shoe. Neutral shoe is typically for that person who has that normal, that slight pronation, that normal arch. Um, and then, so it can also be for someone who has supination and a high arch. And then it also helps with shock absorption for the neutral shoe. Um, stability shoe is going to be for someone who might over pronate. Um, so that's that flat arch where your foot might kind of roll in a little bit more. And then it has typically more stability features, um, in the midsole for that to help kind of stabilize your walk. And these shoes are designed to help, um, kind of make sure that your foot 
doesn't continue hitting in that area it's been hitting so if you have like the overpronation where you tend to kind of roll inward towards your arch it's going to help to kind of stable that or stabilize that a little bit more um and then motion control that is for people who typically are oops, sorry I switched that um are typically for people who are severely um uh, overpronating so they're rolling inward a lot um and then as far as seeing like more cushioned and wide width, wide width, obviously, if you are putting on a shoe and your feet are rubbing a lot on all the different types of shoe on the sides, you might want to try a wide width. Um, and then as far as more cushioned, a lot of that just comes to personal preference, um, whether you want the heavier cushion or less cushion, that sort of thing. And like I said, if you guys go to one of those stores, after they watch you walk and do that gait analysis, they should recommend whether you're more of a neutral shoe, you should be more in a stability or more in a mo motion control shoe. Um, and then wearing the right type of socks. Um, again, something before I got into running a lot, I never really even thought about it, but you actually wanna try to avoid cotton socks because they do not breathe very well. If your sock gets wet, you're gonna be more prone to kind of getting that rub and blisters, um, which no one wants blisters. And then something that you should look for instead of cotton would be more of like a wool sock, polyester, nylon, because those are going to breathe a little bit more and be more sweat wicking to kind of keep those dry and reduce your risk of getting blisters. And then the different types of socks, um, there's like seamless, thickness, compression, um, arch report, all these different types of socks. A lot of these different ones are going to come based on personal preference. Trail socks, you might want to gear more towards if you're a hiker, because they might be a little bit more thicker and have um, padding in certain areas. So you're going to be less likely to get blisters with that. And then things to think about um, when you guys go shopping for shoes, make sure that you go shopping late in the day. Uh, late in the day, your feet are going to be more swollen than they are if you first get up in the morning. So it kind of helps you get a better fit for your shoe than if you get up first thing in the morning, your feet aren't as swollen especially if you're gonna be out walking, running, your feet are going to swell a little bit. So it's good to shop late in the day for that. Make sure you bring socks with you that you're gonna be wearing with the shoe. Um, Cause as we just talked about, there's all different types of socks. Some have more padding, some are lighter. You wanna make sure that you're wearing the socks that you're gonna be wearing with those shoes to make sure you get the proper fit. So I'm gonna keep in mind when shopping for shoes is you typically wanna go a half size to a full size larger than what you normally would wear um, and shoes just to allow that growth. So if you're out walking, your feet are swelling even more, or um, to make sure that your toe is not hitting the end of your shoe, because if you're going up and down different hills, stuff like that, again, it's going to rub and you can get blisters where it might be fine if you're just at work setting. But for when you're doing activity and walking, you would be more inclined to get bris or blisters. So it is recommended to go half to full size up. Um, a way to judge that is kind of making sure that you can allow at least a finger's width between your largest toe and the front of the shoe. Again, one of the things you guys can get sized if you go to one of those stores, um, either a running store or walking store, they'll size you and they um, will kind of look to size you up a half size or full size. And then kind of what I mentioned earlier, the shoe should be comfortable from the start. You shouldn't feel like you have to go and break in your shoe for it to be comfortable. It should literally be comfortable in the store. When you're in the store, don't feel bad, like feel free to get up, walk around, see how it goes. Um, I know a lot of the stores I suggested, like Fleet Feet Running Company, a lot of them do have like a certain like 30, 60 day like uh, policy on their shoes where if you go and walk in them or run in them and you realize that they're not fitting or they're rubbing and you're getting blisters, a lot of them do have a policy where you can exchange it for a different shoe. So just something to keep in mind, but yeah, try to walk around first before wearing them out. Um, and then how to know when to replace shoes. So it is recommended around every three to 500 miles, which could be approximately eight to 12 months, you should be replacing your shoes. Given these numbers are gonna vary a little bit depending on how many miles you walk a week, how much you run a week, if you're wearing them outside um, of walking and running, or if you're um, just wearing them for walking or running. Um, another way to judge it is if you start to get new pain or discomfort while following running uh, or while uh, walking or running or following the exercise. Like I said, that's something that actually I saw is when I was running in the wrong type of shoe, I started to get knee pain. Um, given pain or discomfort can be from multiple things. So keep that in mind too. There's a lot that goes into that. Um, 
with orthopedic issues and full body mechanics and strength training other than just shoes. So just keep that in mind, but shoes definitely could help. And then when the cushioning inside the shoe wears down. So the outside of the shoes might still look really new, but if the inside is getting worn down, um, a good way to judge that is if you push your finger in it, it should give a little bit. If it's not giving, your cushion's probably getting worn down um, and it's time to look for a new shoe. And then worn down tread, that's pretty easy to see on the outside when that starts to get worn down. Um, and then something kind of I talked about a second ago to lengthen the lifespan of your shoe is if you were able to, to just save those shoes for walking and running. So don't wear them all the time to and from different places. Um, or if you have multiple shoes, you can swap out shoes, stuff like that. Both of those can help extend the lifespan of your shoe. And then insoles and orthotics. Um, so insoles are designed to add extra padding and support. Um, they make them for odor eliminating, that sort of thing. So they're just a little bit of extra cushion added. Whereas orthotics might still have that extra padding and support, but it's more to manage a medical condition. Um, and it's designed to help correct those biomechanical issues. So like I said, if someone is really overpronating, their doctor might recommend getting orthotics to help correct that overpronation. Um, that way they're not getting, like I said, that constant internal rotation where it can be affecting their knee, hip and stuff like that. It's helping to kind of even that out a little bit. And then orthotics typically have more support than insoles. Um, orthotics, they actually do sell them over the counter now. You don't always have to go to a podiatrist or doctor's office. However, if you want custom made ones, you would want to go to a doctor's office so they can get that custom made for you. Um, and then make sure um, you take information about arch and foot strike to help you uh, guide when you're buying insoles or orthotics. So if you've gone and done that gait analysis, make sure you keep that in mind because a lot of those inserts and orthotics are going to be listed what type of foot you have, whether you need, um, like I said, whether you overpronate, you supnate, neutral, a lot of them are going to be kind of listed towards that. So it can help you when looking for those. Um, and then if you have a lot of pain um, down here, I mentioned, if you switch try orthotics and soles, you're still getting a lot of pain, go to your doctor. They would be the best one to give you advice about that. Um, and then kind of going back to the whole pain issue, shoes are just a small part of it. You guys want to make sure that you are doing proper strength training and stuff like that. So you guys have strong and stable hips. You're able to support your joints, stuff like that. It's going to help a lot as well. Shoes are just a small part of that. Um, and then that is the end of the, the lecture. Um, does anybody have any questions for me on anything we went through today or just any questions in general? Thank you, Chelsea, uh, for taking some time tonight to share uh, some good information. Um, if anybody has questions, go ahead and type those into the chat. We'll stay on here for a few minutes um, to hear those. Um, I think good information about shoes, you know, when you're trying to exercise consistently, the shoes that you wear can be one of the most important pieces of equipment that you purchase for your workouts because you have to be comfortable and um, safe in your workouts. So thank you, Chelsea, for that information. Um, I hope everyone um, can join us next month. Um, we'll be joined by Jara Oliver with the Growing and Growth Collective. And she's going to be talking about um, ways to grow your own uh, vegetables and container gardening. So interesting topic uh, to kick off the spring season. So I hope you can all join me there um, for that. Um, but we will stay on here for a few more minutes if anybody has any questions. Thank you all again for joining us this evening and taking some time to learn about shoes.